to our YouTube as well. Miss Marie, I'm so excited to have you on Freedom Friday. Uh, it is July 10th already. Can you believe that? Of 2020. Time has gone yep. by so quickly. We've yeah. set up these Freedom Fridays to be all about whatever we doggone please to talk about in the same aspect to make it a wonderful type of video blog, if you will, to encourage our listeners to give them an opportunity to learn more about our guests as well as to learn more about themselves. And who better than to be a vessel to that vessel to them than you, Miss Marie. You have been a uh, living example of the journey of self-discovery. Would you agree with that? Yeah, I think, <laughs> yes, I think so. <laughs> I think that's, that's my motto, self-discovery self or bust. I love it. <laughs> Marie, would you share a little bit of your history, how we got connected, how, uh, how you're just willing to be such a wonderful, willing participant? Well, thank you. I'm, um, so I've lived a lifetime of seeking, I think, opportunities for growth always and for service from the time I was a young person. I've had a couple of different distinct careers as a result of that and been successful at them. And I met you about maybe, I think, eight or nine years ago when I was working in real estate in Palmdale. Um, for K based at the Keller Williams office there and you were the in-house uh, productivity coach and mm -hmm. that's how we first met and you left KW and and I also moved on to another location of KW but still practicing real estate and I found what you had done for me the doors that you had helped me open of insight into my own process and why some things seemed to fit well for me and other parts of real estate didn't fit well for me. And, and you really helped me discover that. And so I continued working with you privately and we've gone forward to partner on some things. And now I'm, um, I'm available to do coaching under your banner, um, under the banner of your, your organization, One Light Ahead. And so here we are. Isn't that exciting? I, yeah. And yeah. You, you've got certified in a specific material as well. Did you want to speak a bit yes. about that? Yeah, the, um, the Augmandino, this was generated um, out of the, um, the coach, writer, and leader, Augmandino. It was generated out, of, generated out of some of his personal writings, which turned into be international bestsellers. Um, the Greatest Salesman in the World, uh, the principal book, which is really kind of a metaphor for being uh, successful as a human. Um, and so that was taken on by a couple of folks in um, Utah and at the request of Mandino's widow, and they created a training program, a personal development and professional development training program called uh, The Habit Finder. Mm -hmm. and using materials, using the raw material from Ogmandino, but also using a, a fantastic and still to me very mysterious and accurate mathematical tool that was developed by, um, I'm blanking on his name. Hartman Institute. Um, yes, the Hartman, Hartman Institute Hartman. Mm -hmm. back in the 1960s. And they used the, this mathematical formulation to begin to develop measurements that would help people look at their habits of thinking and see which habits of thinking were helping them and which habits of thinking were getting in their way. And when you first introduced me to this, I just saw the language of it that was so humane mm -hmm. and so human. Um, and it's still, I still love it. I don't wanna be limited to just looking at coaching through that one lens but um, it is a wonderful foundational tool for helping people discover themselves and move forward. And I, I, keep, doing it, I keep doing things with you over and over again as a student and as a um, kind of a, you know, a so-called assistant or associate because I just uh, keep getting deeper and deeper and I want to get deeper with it. I want to understand it um, until it's second nature. And a lot of it has become second nature for me and how I observe and experience other people and experience myself. I, I love, there's so many pieces of what you said. And, and I t tell people all the time, I've been an executive coach now 
over 10 years and just amazes me that that much time has gone by. I've been a trainer for over 20 years and in business for 20 years and gone through so many different processes of training and teaching and coaching and developing others. And I tell people, I, I got certified in the disc behavior styles, which was the outward behaviors. And when I got exposed to the habit finding material, it was the everything happening beneath the surface that really yes. would take for, and I spent many years coaching before I got exposed to the habit finder. And as you got to see, it took me a little while to buy into adding it into my curriculum because yeah. it was an awareness that I had spent so many years learning what they had documented. And then to be able to have a way to use that documentation, as well as, as you said, use our uniqueness, our own years of history and experiences and training and bring that into our coaching arena. And you also helped with the Masters League competition and how we built that. And so yes. uh, that is years and years of uh, the process of growing other individuals, learning how to create systems and structures for their business, as well as give them some awareness of how they show up and how they connect and how they are purposeful in that process and so we've we've spent a lot of time building a whole lot of things right yeah yeah and it's really <laughs> been like working with your material and how you've adapted um uh the the habit finder material and folded in into your own vision and your own tools that you have um um I say we go, we're explorers and you, you, you as a coach, you're an explorer, you go out and you raid the camps of other explorers and you see what they have and you, you create a mess with it and then you, you integrate it into something that makes sense to you. You, you change it, you, you adapt it into your own la vision language, I guess, really. Um, that, and so I've seen, I've gotten to experience through you different ways of looking at one tool, one training tool. For instance, last night you and I were in a, in a, in a workshop and you had us do an exercise, um, the half dozen of us or so who were in it, you had us do an exercise. And I had just done that exercise earlier in the day because mm -hmm. I was working on another habit finder program and I was just playing with it. And I thought you were gonna go in one direction and you went in a completely different direction that made total sense to me and was useful to the people in the room. Um, you know, quite selfishly, I, I, I love this material for what I get out of it for me personally. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm personally my individuality, I'm, I'm not at the beginning of building my life of work and contribution. I'm really, you know, fully, I want to say I'm still in the middle of it because I'd like to think I have another 30 or 40 years, but, but the fact is I don't. And so my, my mission now is not to build something new, but to figure out how to integrate the benefits um, that I take from a life experience in different professions in different communities, um, in different social and political and business settings, how to take all of that and place it in service to others. Because like you, I have a natural, a natural instinct to want to serve others and help them grow forward and help them understand themselves more deeply. So um, that's, that's why I'm here. <laughs> and you add a multitude of gold nuggets, as our team reminded you, as you have a way of being able to observe. And I, I loved it. You actually owned yourself yesterday. So Dr. Marie speaking, and <laughs> it was just adorable. <laughs> and uh, the gift is, is that we do get the opportunity to be strategic insiders and outsiders to those that allow us and give us permission yep. to walk the journey with them. And you've gotten to start doing that process. You also had to overcome a few things along the way. And uh, I'd love to set that up as the next question and, and to honor everybody's time, be real defined in our time frame. is one sure. of the questions we're learning to ask everyone we get to interview on Freedom Fridays is what perceptions have you had to overcome? If you were to pick one or two that were really powerful in your journey, what would you give insight to others and invite them to possibly even go into a journey with you in the future about that? perceptions about myself and as they apply to others you may choose uh, to have, 
I, I, I purposely, as you know, open up questions to whatever comes up yeah. for that individual, yeah. because there's just such a gift to our uniqueness. I, uh, you know, I had a wonderful conversation earlier today about the opportunities we all get real purposeful about that and we've talked about it for years that natural genius but also and also we're trailblazers we created the trailblazer summit with that concept of we get to create our own path we get to define the journey that we want to be ridiculously on fire about and yeah. then yeah. things are not work to us then things are passionate and commitment and driven and inspired and that's what we want to help others do. And so yeah. for you personally, if you were to contemplate one or two, doesn't need to be any more than that, of, of perceptions that you've really been gnawing away at, what would they be? Well, it, it, part, of, part of one came up last night and that is having lived um, a lifetime, the word we chose was pretend, um, but, um, really that's that's a word that describes um what's real about me isn't good enough or isn't adequate enough for this occasion or in front of you a person that i want to impress or who i want to win over or who i want to trust me or work with me um for whatever reasons we i think i know we all get planted seeds very early in life um of some interpretation that help us conclude that um, what we are authentically and at our core isn't good enough. And we've got to put on costumes to present ourselves to the world in different situations um, in order to be acceptable. I think Brene Brown talks about it a lot. Mm -hmm. She talks about instead of trying to fit into the places that you find yourself, Find the places where you belong, where, where you're organically connected. Well, I think that's anywhere. I, my big discovery is that's anywhere if you accept yourself from the inside out. And I think the great, habit finder, the great habit finder lesson is we do damage to ourselves when we, when we are um, erasing parts of ourselves. And... And I think the whole habit finder journey is to discover that what I am is, has value. And what I do is an outflow of that, an expression of that, but the doing isn't my value. Um, the value comes from how deep I can reach and how authentically I can express my, my true gifts, as you call it, as habit finder calls it, our genius. Mm -hmm. And I love that. And actually, you've worked with me specifically on some exercises I've learned over the years to self-discover without even realizing they're self-discovering, which is going into yes. the book that we're developing. And with that, uh, it's just been, I mean, the Habit Finder has been a tool and a pathway for that. And then we, each of our, the coaches, which is a pretty large community now, uh, have brought their own uniqueness and their own stories and histories, et cetera to learn how to guide others to lead from the inside out. And yeah. uh, that, you know, I got a master's in leadership and one of the wonderful books and ironically I was looking at the other day is leading from the inside out. And uh, yeah. never mind, one of the books I loved was the uh, leading on empty. And so many people don't yes. realize how easy that is to do. And one of the, yes. I, I wanted you to share one of the books you shared last night that has been a, a wonderful resource for you that's really been key yeah that you are recommending over and over again and uh, just <laughs> <laughs> and share what made you share what what made that so powerful for you and because a lot of people are in a season right now that they're questioning so many different things we are in unmet expectations all the time we are in uh, unknown futures we are in so many different seasons and so i think this is a really powerful thing that you've learned that helps you keep very purposeful about what's on your radar yeah, well, I think the current season we're in, I think, is really emblematic. It's, um, it is, has been a complete disruptor for people. And I think um, it's disrupted our institutions. It's, it's disrupted our sense of safety emotionally, um, psychologically. We're, we're really, we've been thrown off our course, all of us, in some fashion or another. And what that is, is it's an opportunity to discover, whoa, 
what if everything's been ripped away from me or everything I counted on or most of what I counted on and we start looking at it again as we begin to begin to recover emotionally psychologically economically we look at it again and we say wow I did not even want that mm -hmm. I was saying yes to relationships and work and identities that I don't even want and you know I countless over and over again i have conversations with people about this well the book that i've been reading is called essentialism by greg mccallan and i'm on now i'm on my third read mm -hmm. i'm like now marking every page and what it did for me when i first read it last year and it was a kind of incidental gift from someone it was she just shoved a book at me and i don't even think she knew what the value mm -hmm. that she was giving me um, a fellow realtor it's about choosing our lives it's about choosing what we say yes to and about acknowledging that we in spite of what our culture has driven us into it's like driven us into this box canyon of mm -hmm. That's frenetic right. busyness saying yes to everything having to work you know 24 7 be available 24 7 um and that's a fact i mean that's what our our culture has become um the vow they're implicit they're quiet values but they're there and and this is about saying whoa wait a second what is it costing me to be spread this thin to be saying yes to everything and it, it's become almost a reflexive to want to say yes to want to please to not want to disappoint people, to not want to miss a great opportunity. And the big bottom line of this, of this writing of his, which is very concise and, and really an easy read on the surface, is creating your own opportunities rather, and choosing them rather than just um, selecting from the opportunities that the universe is throwing at you. Uh, because everything you say yes to takes up psychic space. It takes up mental space. It takes up your physical energy. It takes up your intelligence, your creativity. Do you really want to be doing all of that? I mean, that's the big question. And for me, the answer is a resounding no. Mm -hmm. and, and a resounding commitment to being in choice about my life. Completely, I love that. As, completely, as completely as one possibly can. And, and I love how you said that. And we've actually created a, a very simple filter process called the All About You program. It's on the One Light Academy uh, website. And I'll put that link in our comments. And we're giving the first 20 the opportunity to go through the seven modules, give us feedback, walk through creating those filters and getting real purposeful about what really matters to them, where they are, where they want to be, and what may be in the process along the way what may not be yeah. a actual commitment or what may be a trigger or a roadblock, whatever it may be, and walking them through that to start determining how aware they really are to take them through a phase of discovery, refinement and growth. As a beginning stage, as you know, the coaching journey is not a simple journey. In many ways, actually, it's simple in some aspects, yet it can be also very, as we talked about yesterday, um, the there's a process and adapt to it and layer after layer after layer. And you spent years working through all the layers and really getting deeply intertwined with what really matters to you. And you're, yeah. like I said, a living example of that. So anything you want to close out with us on anything you want to make sure we shared today, anything. Um, and I'm going to have you, when you share it on your personal page to put your link for the habit finder, as well as um, anything else you want to share so that we can make sure to get the people that really will value your journey and grow through your ability to guide them through that. I think I'm no, excited just, about your resource for that. Yeah, no, I, my, I'll, I'll be brief for a change and say um, it's, much, it's much more fun living life with an awareness that I am brushing aside the distractions of my own defective programming of my own you know well-intentioned but but um 
not helpful, some often not helpful programming, um, as Don Miguel Ruiz calls it, domestication mm -hmm. in the four agreements, you know, um, brushing aside the domestication, brushing aside all that's been thrust upon me, and actually claiming my space in this very brief life, um, mm -hmm. this gift that I've been given. It's much more fun this way. Let me just say that. If you want to have fun, sign on. I <laughs> love it. That's a perfect ending, Marie. Thank you, everyone, for joining us. Thank you for the permission to share your voice and your vessel. You are a gift, and we're excited to be a support to you as well as a partner with you as we continue to impact lives. Your gift. Thank you. Bye, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Bye -bye.